Hey guys, Drug and Biker. So, I haven't been able to get time or money to get a bike for the channel. It's still in the works. Just everybody wants a mint for their wrecked, no titled project basket case. And it's like, no man, I'm, I'm, I'm not paying $1,200 for a wrecked Honda Shadow Saber that's coming in crates and boxes. Not happening. So, I I'm found out that a brake flush had never been done on my bike when I bought it a year ago and I found that out because my, my front brakes started to uh, to fade away on me especially in this cold weather we're having these chilly 40 degree Texas winters um, but so I figured why not front brake master cylinder rebuild is something that has to be done on the majority of used bikes that you're gonna buy so, if nothing else, it's just peace of mind. You've rebuilt the master cylinder. You, you're going to have front brakes. Like, above and beyond, you need front brakes. So, this one needs to be rebuilt. So, I figured, why not? We'll show it to you. So, real simple job. You'll need a turkey baster. No jokes. Torx head T25 and a T27 for Harley Davidson. For all of you lucky people, you'll need probably an Allen wrench, a Phillips head, and if the designer's an asshole, a flathead. Uh, you will need a flathead screwdriver, a very, very small one for a Harley because there is a, some people call them a circlip, some people call them a snap ring, right here underneath the brake lever that holds the brake lever mechanism or the pin in place. If you can find a snap ring wrench that'll fit it, good luck. It's just as easy to get it off with that. A Phillips head screwdriver to remove the cover for or cap for the master cylinder. And a bottle of dot three, dot four, dot five brake fluid that you'll need. Uh, really easy to find out. The top of your master cylinder will tell you which one goes in it. Do not use a different one. If it says dot three, that does not mean you can use dot four or dot five. It is very specific to what the components of the master cylinder is made of and everything else. If you use the wrong one, it can eat your rubber seals away. It can eat through your brake linings. Just use what it says, please. So, it's a really easy process to do. Uh, for this one, it's so bad, I'm going to have to remove the entire master cylinder off the motorcycle. So, first and foremost, let's get the brake lever off. Like I said, if you can find snap ring wrenches that fit, more power to you. Getting this to line up just right to stretch this. It's kind of a pain in the ass. And if you drop it, it is a bitch to find. That little tiny snap ring. That's all that stands between you and disaster. Another great thing to have is a magnetic bowl so that you don't use all, lose all of your tiny stuff. You would also want to wrap your gas tank in an old t-shirt or a towel, anything of that nature, because brake fluid is extremely corrosive. It will eat the paint off of your gas tank in a heartbeat. It'll also eat the chrome off your handlebars. This stuff is nasty. Um, before that, Remove the pin. And as you can see, I've already done the old school trick of my brake light won't turn off. I'll put some duct tape and a beer tab underneath it. Yeah. Let me tell you how long that lasted. That's when I started noticing brake fade. But that's going off all of my old school buddies. Who, oh man, this is my 13th Harley. They all do it. <laughs> Everybody who owns a Harley, especially Harley, I've noticed, has a trick T 
to fix it. And don't follow the tricks. Just, just fix it. It's not that difficult. And it's really not that expensive. It was $30 for the rebuild kit. It cost me $2 for the turkey baster. And I owned most of the other shit anyway. Like, if you own a Harley, you have to have Torx head bits. It's like a Jeep. They just do everything in Torx head. So, Harley either wants you to take it to a shop or buy expensive shit to fix it. So, the next step is to remove the nuts in the top of the brake master cylinder. Now, some older bikes you'll get, some that have been sitting, especially outside and stuff, will have just, these will be corroded in. If you start to turn it and it doesn't feel like it's gonna turn, there's an old trick of taking a hammer and holding the screwdriver at the same time and whack it and turn it. And it, nine times out of 10, will break your threads free. You do not want to strip these. It is a less of a hassle to just buy a new master cylinder at that point and just be done with it. Because it is, you don't want to go through the process of drilling these out. Like it's not worth it, trust me. That's what happened with me on my old Suzuki. And I ended up finding an OEM Chinese refab that cost $30 less than the rebuild kit for that master cylinder. Um, one thing about motorcycles is they are habit forming. And they are probably one of the most expensive habits I've ever had in my life. So when you remove these, there will be brake fluid on the outside of it. Usually have a paper towel ready because my handlebars set far, far enough forward. There's nothing but air below it i wasn't too worried about dripping this but always have ugh, paper towels lots of paper towels so harleys are a little bit different where the boot and the cap are kind of one piece you can buy just the boot or you can buy the whole new cap. You can usually clean this boot up pretty well. Like they're made actually a little bit better than like the cheap little ones that go in Japanese bikes and stuff like that. You do have to change every time you do a brake job or flushing it and everything else just because they're a little bit thinner of a rubber and everything else. But you gotta have a container to put your brake fluid into. I watched a few videos, just uh, it's been a minute since I've done one of these. Uh, of course, YouTube. A couple of videos out there. Um, and they had stolen their wife's Tupperware. I get in trouble with my wife enough. Oh, that is not the color you want for your brake fluid. It, it should not look like I've been roofing in the summer piss. But it is extremely nasty stuff. And mine has chunkies floating in it, which is just beyond scary. But I've been riding this bike for a year with my master cylinder in this condition. And now that I'm getting the fluid out of it, wow. I, I think maybe I should find God because the, the fact that this thing was even stopping surprises the shit out of me. That is horrible. I'll show you in just a second. So now that I have my turkey baser properly inserted in the bottle. I don't know if I can get... Yeah. That's, uh... That's not supposed to look like the bottom of a whale's belly. Like, that that shouldn't look like Captain Ahab's ship inside of your brake master cylinder. That's, that is absolutely terrible. I, it actually kind of pisses me off because they told me they had flushed all the fluids. You forgot one, fucker. So, more paper towels. You 
you want to drain the last of this out of here and soak it up we will sit and do the whole clean on it in a little bit I'm gonna pull the whole thing off and kind of show before and afters if I will try to take pictures of this as I go or I'll have my wife come out and take pictures of it and send it to me and we'll post it to my Instagram page it's not much on it yet I'm new to all of this I am not a social media person anything like that so I'm just getting into the flow of things I'll kind of post pictures of what the inside of this looks like okay so Let's pull this master cylinder, shall we? Slide you guys back a pitch, huh? Oh, I almost forgot something very important you need when working on a motorcycle. Cold beer. Refill as often as necessary. But, yeah, so, Torx head bit. That, need the T20, I don't know. So, Sorry about that. Interrupted by my daughter. I don't have editing software yet, so you guys get to watch all the bullshit. So, remove the screws from the brake master cylinder. This is where your magnetic bowl still comes in very much handy. Now, I did do a little bit of pre-planning, and I did break loose the ones on this outside shield. On a Harley, you're going to have a screw up here in the front normally, and then one back here on top. And that kind of holds this casing, which is what holds your master cylinder to the handlebars. Um, I know that a good portion of like Japanese and European bikes... They do not have that setup. Theirs is a little bit different, um, which kind of more power to them. It makes things a little bit easier in the long run. Give me just a second. Okay, so what I had forgotten to do was remove my mirror because on a Harley, your brake Master cylinder also holds your turn light and your mirror. So I got that broke free real fast. While I was trying to help my wife find her car keys, because she never knows where her car keys are. And I also forgot that Harley has this fun little thing on their shit. It's a reverse Torx head bit yeah which sometimes you can find the right 12 point socket to fit it meh that's nothing a good old pair of channel locks won't care so when you remove the banjo screw from the back of this you have to remember that there is still brake fluid in the line so, it's going to be one of those, um, when you pull it free, make sure it's away from anything painted, anything chrome, because it might spill a little bit out. And that's never fun for anybody involved. <laughs> And I really don't think they could have put any more threads on this banjo screw. My God. It's kind of like whenever you're putting in a spark plug or taking a spark plug out of something. 
you're like, my God, how long is this spark plug? And you pull it out, and it's got like maybe a half inch worth of threads. But you swear to God, you were screwing it backwards for like five minutes, and it still wouldn't come free. It's kind of how I'm feeling with this banjo right now. This is the screw that will never end. So, take your master cylinder and turn it up. Kind of drain the last of that gunkiness out of it. I'm actually going to set it down on my desk. So, let's move over to the desk. Okay, we've moved to the desk. I really need a taller desk chair. Like, that is something I need. I built the desk at a height, and I was like, yeah, I like that. That's nice. And then realize that the chair I own is like a foot shorter than it needs to be. And it doesn't raise up. So, this is not what you want to see when you open a master cylinder. That's nasty. That is beyond nasty. So, I'm probably going to use paper towels, q-tips, compressed air, everything I can think of to clean this damn thing out. I might even spray some WD-40 in here and see what that does. Because for any of you just getting into working on your bikes and stuff, just so you know, WD-40 is not a lubricant. It's a water displacement. It's to help things not rust or to clean rust off of things not a lubricant it will eat the lubricant off anything you put it on so if you spray wd-40 that's why whenever you were a kid and your bicycle chain was always crunchy and nasty and horrible it's because you were using wd-40 instead of chain lube and for those of you that end up buying a bike with a chain chain lube it's your best friend so, this is going to get gross, and this is going to be time consuming. So, I will see you guys back when I get all of that nastiness cleaned out of here. And we're back. That was 15 minutes of my life. I'm never getting back. But, this is the amount of shit I got out of that thing. Mucho bueno. <laughs> wow, I did not, I feel so bad for my Harley right now. And so glad that I didn't die riding it. Uh, they're motorcycles, they're supposed to be dangerous, right? It's the whole reason we got into it. Danger and chicks. Yeah, motorcycles don't get chicks. Any girl out there that's not interested in motorcycles doesn't care about your motorcycle. Any girl who cares about motorcycles doesn't give a shit about you. She wants to talk about your motorcycle. So if you're getting into motorcycling for girls, you're getting into it for the wrong damn reasons. Okay. So in the Harley Master Cylinder, there's this dust cover. I don't know if you guys can see it all that great. Let's see if we can get some better lighting here. Let's see if I can get my eight-year-old to hold this phone for a second. There you go, Liam. Hold it just like that. Thank you, sir. There's this little dust cover thing inside, and it's supposed to pop right back out. Mine doesn't. It, it's still got like half of its travel left. Probably because of the amount of shit that was in this thing. So now that my little cameraman has done his job. All right. Pair of pliers, or channel locks, if you're technical like I am. I know, channel locks is a brand called slotted adjustable wrenches or whatever. Don't be that guy, come on. They're channel locks and, and adjustable wrenches. They're crescent wrenches, get over it, man. So, you just <clears throat> give it a tug, out it comes. Then you're left with small cylinder on the inside. Gonna kinda do the same thing with that one. 
be careful when you pull it out because there is a spring on the back side of it. And you can shoot yourself in the eye and be part of a Christmas story. Yay! You'll shoot your eye out. Oh, that's kind of gross in there too, so. Hey buddy, can you give me some more paper towels? I have used all of my paper towels. Okay. Appreciate it, sir. Everybody saw you walk by, you're on YouTube now. You're famous! <laughs> he just walked by. I have a 10 year old, or 11 year old, who's dying to be on YouTube. Yeah, so, here you go, sir. Thank you, sir. Can I get you Do you just want to come say hi to the peoples? Yeah. He just wants to come say hi to the peoples. Say hi, peoples. Hi. Alright, you're not really helping me, so go away. Hi. <laughs> go give her a hand. You're a big brother. Huh? You're, go give her a hand. You're a big brother. <sighs> give me two seconds. My wife went to the store, so I'm not only cleaning a master cylinder, I also gotta clean my daughter's ass when she's done. Uh, so... <laughs> Inside of here, there is a dust cover. The new kit does come with a new dust cover and a new little cap. So you don't have to worry about destroying the old one when you pull it out. Whoever has kids out there, let your friends who don't babysit for a night Perfect birth control. Got a nice new shiny spring. Actually, I gotta put. What did you do with those paper towels you brought me, buddy? Uh, I gave it to you. Uh, yeah, brought me one paper towel, boss. I brought you two. Just bring me the roll, man, and set it right here. Whoever has an eight-year-old uh, out there, like, why do you have to be so technical with them? Hey, man, can you grab me some paper towels? I need more paper towels. He brought me two. Two. Oh, Alright, you have a brand new cylinder. Make sure to put that on something clean. Everything needs to go somewhere clean. It comes with a new pack of lube. Don't get excited. Don't think you want to use it for those purposes anyway. You have a new dust cover cap and a new dust cover boot. No, I do not know what the technical names of those things are. Trash, please. Look, You're you welcome. did something on YouTube. Yes, finally. And that is the extent of the instructions you get. It literally tells you to lube extensively and shove in hole. A lot of other things that have instructions like that. So, to get this old dust cover boot off, you can take either a hook or just a small Phillips head screwdriver, which apparently Harley just designed those to be used constantly. And I wish I could say this is like the easiest thing to get out, but it's been in my bike for 14 years. So, yeah. It's a little on the stuck side. Oh. How has that been in your like bike for 14 years? Peeling a grilled cheese sandwich apart. So it doesn't matter if you destroy it. I did quite a good job of that. There is a hard ring inside of it that tore smooth through it because you have a new one. So the first thing to go back on is gonna be that, but we're gonna take another quick small break so I can clean all of the gunk that is accumulated in this thing out and pray to God I don't scratch the inside of this because then I am screwed. So. Back in a
Okay, so I got it cleaned out pretty well, but there are small holes in the bottom that have to be cleaned out also. Uh, there's a ton of tricks to that. You can take a small piece of guitar string or wire or something of that nature and blow that in there. Um, but you can also use compressed air. That looked like it did a pretty good job. See here. Yeah. Flashlight, see if any light comes through. It would be awesome if it does. Turn that loud damn thing off before it kicks itself back on. There's Liam again being my stalker. Yeah, looks like we are good. We have a smiley face. I did that a minute ago, almost no light came through. So a little bit of compressed air. I'll blow a little bit more just straight through it to make sure everything blown out. Blow a little down into those holes just to make sure. get everything lined up, it'd be amazing. <coughs> yeah, so first things first, let's clean up the workspace a little bit before putting this back together. Throw away this nasty glob of wrap I took out I think I used I think that's now a record I think Liam held the most for the most amount of q-tips ever used to clean an ear I think this beat it so first things first we put the new dust cover back on now there is a small Ridge, you kind of oh, have to get this to pop back into. You can use a flathead screwdriver to do this, just be extremely careful that you don't damage the outside of this. That's fine, baby girl. Go for it. Yes, I have tongue thought coordination over here. One second. I'm over here thinking I did something wrong, but this dust cover actually goes in a little bit different than the original one did it actually fits more in the slot instead of more covering it with a boot on the inside I'm hoping that that keeps the nastiness out of this a little bit more because it is a oh and look at that this actually goes on afterwards that fucked up like I said I would record all of my mess ups everything but luckily enough should be able to get this out fairly easily due to the fact that I haven't it's not really had time to get heated up in the bike or anything like that so yeah that came out without scarring it 
So, first things first, we take the spring and drop it in. And then on this, tear your little Adam and Eve special off there. That's about what it looks like, right? The free gift that comes in the box. I mean, I wouldn't know from personal experience or anything. Holy hell. Now, the lube for this stuff is going to be different than just lube you get for other parts of the bike just because of how corrosive brake fluid is it will eat through just about anything so it's kind of a lube it up you want to get both of your rubber seals lubed and kind of the space in between everything kind of filled up fairly well so that you reduce the risk of air buildup or something grabbing um, things of that nature uh, but yeah, there you go it's all said and done you turn me off paper towel buddy just one paper towel this time will be fine or half a paper towel whatever and I don't know if you guys could tell or not, but I am battling Texas allergies. We've had some winds coming in from the Austin direction, which means you can't breathe for three days. Then you would die. All right. Oh, that moves so much more like it's supposed to. All right, and then we take our little dust cover. Hold the piston back. Stand up for this one. So, you kind of have to hold the piston back in place while pushing the dust cover down in place. Which is apparently easier said than done.